friends, with the cold weather approaching, I want to talk a little bit about the value of acorns and oak trees. Uh, acorns have been used for thousands of years by indigenous cultures as a food source and as a primary food source. They're extremely high in protein, they're a great starch, and when processed properly, they actually stick together much like glutinous bread would. Um, they have a binding protein that's similar to the protein in oats. Uh, so it's a gluten-free flour that you can use solely by itself. These provide <clears throat> one of the most viable sources of protein, fat, and carbohydrate in all of nature. And it's usually prolific. And there's a few types of acorn trees that grow in my area. Um, there's a couple hundred that grow around the world, but the main one that we're interested in is a white oak. Red and black oaks have a higher level of what's called tannin in them. And if you bite into a persimmon or a quince or even an, just an acorn off the ground, oftentimes you'll have this really dry uh, feeling in your mouth. And there's a lot of herbs that make use of this drying action to pull your skin together, especially when you have a rash or you have a sort of a weeping cut. A tannin will draw your skin together so you're not oozing out uh, the infection. So if you have poison ivy, a great tactic is to use a tannic plant in order to lessen the swelling, lessen the inflammation, and to stop it from oozing and allow your body to heal it. Um, what we're primarily going to be collecting in this video are white oaks. And there's a pretty big difference between the two of these. White oaks acorns are typically smaller, whereas red and black acorns are much bigger. Red and black acorns have a thicker outer shell, and they're pretty hard to break open unless you let them dry for a while, whereas white oaks you can break open with one hand. So let's take a closer look, and then we're going to go through from picking all the way to creating a flower and then baking something with it eventually as well. Let's take a close-up look. Before we get started, I want to show you the difference between a red oak and a white oak. Red and black oaks have very pointed, lobed leaves, so they have these points on the end of it. And all of the red and black oaks will have this shape. Uh, it looks slightly different, it might be further toothed or lobed, but they'll always have these points on the end of the leaves. This is not the oak we want to use, if we can. If we have no choice, then this will suffice as well, but it's going to take you longer to get rid of those tannins, the drying components that I was talking about a minute ago. So we're not going to concern ourselves with the red and black oaks. The one we really want is a white oak leaf. And white oaks always have rounded lobes. And by lobes, I mean the edges of the leaf that people, when you're drawing leaves as a kid, you kind of draw these pieces that jut out from the center of the leaf. And that's what I'm talking about when I'm saying lobe. So you're looking for rounded lobe oak leaf. From a visual standpoint, red oaks are often much larger than white oaks. Red oaks have these very thick, like I was saying, shells. Uh, and they're usually darker in color, whereas the white oaks have thinner skinned and smaller acorns. And these acorns in my area are less common to find than the red and black oaks. These have become dominant in the last 70 years or so. Another identifying characteristic is if you find an acorn with a cap attached to it, white oaks typically have very, very small, thin caps. So to identify a white oak, you want to look for an oak tree that has the rounded leaves again, one that has very small acorns, and ones that are very, very lightly covered on the top by the cap of the acorn. And I'll give you a close-up of the acorn as well. This is a close-up of the white oak acorns. And these are the black oak. Those are them together. White oak on the right, black or red oak on the left. Once you find a spot that has a leaf that's rounded, has the smaller and shorter capped acorns, you can collect these in any sort of bin that you can find. 
And when you're looking at them, you don't want to take the ones that clearly are damaged. And there's a couple ways to tell if they have an insect or just physical damage. Um, visually, you'll actually see a hole in them sometimes. So when you're digging through them and picking them up, you'll actually feel that they're lighter. And you'll also see a tiny hole. And this hole can also be in the top, or it could be on the side of it. And this is where an acorn weevil has gotten inside. And ironically, these weevils are actually edible as well, but we're not going to go into eating those right now. So dismiss, don't even collect ones that have holes or cracks in the top or holes or cracks in the side. And I'll give you a close-up look at this as well. After a pretty short period of time, I've already got probably three or four pounds of acorns. And I usually just carry them in the backpack that I, I made from reeds uh, and straps that I, I macrameed as well. So we're going to take these over to a bucket. And in the bucket, we're going to pour these in and see which ones float and which ones sink to the bottom. The ones we want to use are the ones that sink, because any of the ones that float have air pockets in them, either from being moldy or from the acorn weevils coming in and eating them. So I'll show you how to do that. So why should we bother eating acorns? Acorns provide us a food source that is both sustainable, it's delicious, and it's prevalent. You, you, mean, you can go anywhere in the world and find acorns. These <clears throat> are a really great source of complex carbohydrates and would be enough to sustain you in the same way that they sustained indigenous people for thousands of years before we got here. Um, in a moment, I'm going to show you a recipe that I use once we've dried and processed all these acorns. Um, it'll be on a coming video. And whatever flower or way you prepare them, they're delicious, as long as you choose the white oaks. They'll be very low in tannins. Um, even the higher tannin ones you can leach, and I'll show you how to do that as well. Let's take a look. Now, I've got a very rusty <laughs> colored pail of water here, and I have a lot of iron in, in my uh, water. What I'm gonna do is just pour the acorns into this water, and it could be any temperature water, it doesn't matter. And if you watch, some of these acorns are gonna float, some are gonna sink. We're gonna take a look at the ones that float. So there's a distinct layer at the bottom of ones that are floating and ones that are sinking. So what this really does, even the ones that are floating, depending on how dry they are, they could actually be fine. Uh, just a matter of cracking some of them open and seeing if they're bad or not. Like this one is fine, it's just dry. So what I'm going to do is go through, pick out the ones that have holes in them, and then check some of the other ones that don't have visible holes for issues. When sorting through these, it's best to note when you crack them open, you want to be cracking them kind of with a pincher grip. And I'll grab towards the top and squeeze. And this will usually break it right in half. And from that point, you can judge whether the acorn is good or not. Um, and sometimes half of the acorn will be good. Sometimes the whole thing will be good. Most of the time, you can tell from the, the method I just showed you. Um, but something like this, I'd probably just break off that side and then save the rest because half of this meat is fine. The other half didn't look so great. So I'm gonna throw that into my cleaned acorn bucket here. So I'm gonna go through these. This is great to do with friends. Uh, if you have good friends who are willing to forage with you. I think foraging in general is better done with a group of people because you can both share in the experience and then at the end you split everything up if you want or decide what people get. But it, it was always a communal effort to do these things. So it, it's time, time saving and community building to be able to do this with somebody. You're finding a way to support yourself through your own volition rather than through working for somebody else or you know, following the mandates of whatever job you have. So. Here's an example of a, a bad one. Sometimes they'll turn darker colored. Let me zoom in so you can see that. 
Sometimes they'll actually turn this color when they're dried, um, but you don't want them to be already this color when you're cracking them open. So this is an example of one you would not want to keep. And I'll just throw these in the compost bin or throw them in the woods. The squirrels are less discriminating than us, so um, you don't have to be as picky with what you throw out there. All right, I'm gonna shell some of these and then show you the end result. After a while, you're gonna get a large pile of something that looks like this. And they don't have to be perfect. I would not recommend having ones that are too, too dark. Sometimes it's just that they're drying. When they dry, they turn kind of a brown color. Other times it could have just gone bad. Um, so I'd try to stick to ones that are, you know, pretty free of blemishes like this. These acorns will be put in a dehydrator or an oven on really low, but I recommend a dehydrator. Because what we're going to do is dry them in a way that does not destroy their ability to hold together. And the value of acorns is that they create a flower that is super nutritious, really high in calories, and it holds together. So you could make pancakes or muffins or cookies just out of acorn. Uh, it has a great, great taste. So in the next video, I'm going to talk about um, how I dry them or show you the end process for drying them and then how you would blend them up and use them. Hope this video has inspired you to get outside and to explore some of the wild edibles in your area. Acorns are a really safe and great place to start. Uh, the worst thing that can happen is you misidentify a red oak for a white oak and your mouth gets dry. Something I didn't mention before is a great way to test them as well for their bitterness is just to taste them. Crack them open and taste them. Putting it in your mouth is not going to make you sick. You know, having a dry mouth is not going to hurt you. Just spit it out if it's too tannic. So you want to find ones, even I would recommend comparing a red oak or what you think is a red oak to a white oak when you identify it. Because you'll really be able to taste the difference and feel the difference in your mouth of it drying out. Um, that drying out feeling dissipates very quickly. So again, be on the lookout for white oaks as all the trees begin to drop their acorns. And in the next part, we'll talk about processing and then we'll do a little baking as well. Stay well, my friends, and remember to rewild your soul. Mm -hmm.